Hello and welcome to The Marina Show. I am so excited today because I, your host, am hosting the amazing, the gorgeous, the talented, the highly established artist, or shall I say artiste, Jessica Gorlicky. Hello, you. Jessica. Thank you. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> Fabulous. Excellent. Awesome. So I'm just going to introduce you to our audience and then we're going to get rolling. I'm going to ask you a few questions and we're going to do a couple of shows with you. How does that sound? Sounds amazing. Awesome. Okay. So Jessica Gorlicky is not only a live performing painter, she is one of the craziest artists in Toronto, the city that we're taping this show from. So I'm going to ask her a bunch of questions. We're going to talk about her paintings and if you tune in next time, she's going to do her own live painting on the Marina Show. So Jessica. Tell me a little bit about how you started and got into painting. Amazing question. I Thank you. don't know myself. I know that it was extremely meant to be this journey of being a kid and loving color, loving to paint, loving to doodle my, my I guess, um, you know, any papers that were around me uh, as I'm taking notes in class. I always had pictures and I was always drawn to photos, pictures and color. Okay. So I had always painted and I had always liked to explore what I could do with my hands in terms of how can I make something that looks like that? Can I make, um, you know, the trees and the sun? Like I was coloring all the time. I was painting all the time. That's very even cool. Even as a kid. Yeah. Okay, so when did you kind of enter the career? Was there like a defining moment that you were sure. like, I think I'm going to be sure. a painter. I think sure. I'm going to do well, this. That's a great question because... Um, once you sort of gain confidence and you keep doing it and you get better at your skill and mm -hmm. if you like to do it you know it's almost like um, singing or a sport you mm -hmm. can practice and you can get better and better at it and yeah. and um, follow teachers that can kind of guide you really well but for me the defining moment I'd say was being able to sell something as a teenager and as a teenager yeah, you sold something? I sold my first painting when I was a teenager it was That's amazing awesome. and I think that really boosts my confidence and then I I put a booklet together and I sort of went out around Toronto to the places that I were familiar with that I thought would work really well with my work um, that complemented my work mm -hmm. venues restaurants um, I guess you know cafes that I thought would, would really complement the art and they were really um, re like they responded really well to putting my work up on their walls and giving me free exposure. That's so cool. It was because then I got to sell even more. People started calling me and I put a little card behind the desk and they were more than happy to give people my card and, and that really made the difference. It was the so community amazing. and it was being able to you know have people sort of be interested mm -hmm. and excited about my work. That sounds awesome. It sounds like you're like an entrepreneurial person. It's not just about the talent. I it's think also so. seemed to be a little bit of a business. You I know, think so. Girl. And that may be really unintentional. It's just the way that just I am. Just a sidekick. All right. Sure. Sweet. So you started doing this and then you started live painting, right? That's what sure. you do now. Sure. So how did that so get into the I, picture? I've painted live for the last 10 years. Okay. Alongside making my collections for, of work, doing commissioned artwork. Okay, what's commissioned and artwork? And so commissioned artwork is I will have a client or someone, a, a company, um, anyone say, Jess, I want this size uh, over that desk, over there, and, you know, with those types of colors, and that's the way I'd like it to look but make it like Jessica Styles. So I will so cool. I will do a commissioned piece and I've done over 500 commissioned paintings for people wow. uh, around the country and I have a few collections of, of work that people have of mine in the States which is really amazing that's for me so to cool. see it cross a border and that someone you know buys a piece of my soul and it's hanging on their walls. Speaking of buying a piece of your soul, when I'm a rich, famous professional, will you do a commissioned painting I for won't me? forget you. Of course okay. I will. It'll be my Excellent. pleasure. I'm like, that's guy, I want it over my desk like this. No problem. Okay. Or maybe I'll just come and surprise you one day. Sweet. Okay, <laughs> so you started with the commission painting and what right. happened? How did the live so I painting? Still, so I live painted alongside of commissions, making my collection for shows which is still what I'm doing today alongside of the live painting. The live painting came in as a fluke and I had started painting for audiences, whether it was um, a live band, a club, a corporate event. It started really slowly and charity events came to me and I was doing a ton of charity work okay. where I would paint live as a source of entertainment. Mm -hmm. They would take that painting and they would silent auction it off to their audience to raise money for whatever the cause was. Okay. I still do that today except I charge quite a bit more for it <laughs> than I did 10 years ago, of oh, course. Sweet. But I think that I've also perfected my craft. Okay. So I think there's good reason for that. And then I worked for some amazing opportunities, which 
consist of? Cirque du Soleil, the Olympics? Cirque du Soleil? Okay. For those of you that aren't from the world, Cirque, <laughs> Cirque du Soleil is one of the most it amazing really shows. How would, you, how would you describe Cirque? I'd say it's, it's just my favorite show on earth. It's the best show on earth. It tours all over the world. Yeah, absolutely. And they asked this woman, they approached her, who's on my show, the Marina show, <laughs> and they said, can you please paint for us? So tell us a little bit about that gig, sure. how you got it, and sure. what it was like. Well, it started off with the Olympics, actually. So the Olympics happened to me. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's Olympics. like a whole story. I have to... Remember the Olympics that the whole world watches? <laughs> she was in the opening ceremony? I got an opportunity to paint for the pre-show of the torch relay. So the torch relay went to 276 communities across the country before the Vancouver Winter Olympics started. Wow. So it like toured the country to get all of us, you know, warmed up, all us Canadians, all across the country, in every community, mm -hmm. and I got to do a small portion of those shows. I also did get to go to the Vancouver opening of the Olympics, which I shared with someone, and they got to perform there as well. And we, uh, we got to paint a alongside of some of the most amazing communities, cities, and towns for seven minutes for RBC. And wow. uh, that, that video is on, online, actually. If you go on my website, it's online. Okay. Yeah, you can see it's like my, my first video. I'm, I'm so shy and I'm freaking out, and I'd never seen 10,000 people in front of 10, me before. 10,000 yeah. people? Yeah, my first video was in Hamilton, and there was about 10,000 people there. I had a TV interview after. I was freaking out. It was like minus Look 10. Look at her on TV now. She's we perfect. We performed. Thanks. I'm still shy. We performed <laughs> um, in minus 10. You know, the stage was always outside. So okay. in Timmins, Shania Twain was there. And wow. we were all freezing, but we were happy. And uh, I was really proud to be a Canadian, actually. Mm -hmm. And so this spuns the next segment of the story, which is Cirque du Soleil, which happened because after the Winter Olympics and that tour, my art changed, my live performance changed, and I started painting really quickly with my hands in winter. So I made a series hands. of videos. Yep, I made a series of videos where I'm painting with my hands on the street, um, just showing people, kids, adults, that they can do whatever they want to do, wherever they want to do it, within good reason, of course, if you're inspired. And I was really inspired by Canada mm -hmm. and by the happiness and joy that I saw during the Olympics. And I wanted to show even myself and, and feel that happiness again by doing mm -hmm. that. So I, I chose a bunch of random locations, and I'm still doing it a year and a half later. So. Wow. So Cirque du Soleil noticed that, and they complimented me on my videos and my work and my paintings, and they said, we would, would you like to perform every day for 77 shows in Totem in Toronto? Sorry. 77 shows. Yeah. <laughs> every single day for three months then? Yeah, about that. From August 10th to October 10th. So that's two straight months. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It was insane. Two it was shows unreal, a day? Though. Two shows, almost every day, two shows. And one how day long off. was the show? 45-minute segment. And I would paint on a lighted canvas that was specially crafted by someone in Montreal. So the canvas was actually lit. It was Canada's first light canvas. And wow, this yep, is a woman of history cool. right now. It was very cool. It, I have it, and I got to keep it, which is like, I look at it, and I turn it on, and it glows, and there's a painting on it. And wow. The, the sad thing about Cirque was that we had to erase the painting that I made each night, and so you never keep I would that. have to replace it and do a holy one with my hands and, and brushes each and every show. And you'd use your but hands I took and pictures. brushes yeah. for every show? Yeah, both. but I took pictures, both. both. That's amazing. It was super cool. It was what super did you cool. learn from that experience? Because it sounds completely rigorous. Like. I, 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 I learned so much about my stamina. I mean, I did that. I also learned about my stamina from the Olympics because that was traveling, you know, two to, to three to 500 kilometers a day, performing twice a day every day, sleeping in a different hotel every night. Wow. It's a different lifestyle. And even though Totem was in my own city, um, I live, you know, north of the city, and that was down at the Portlands okay. in downtown Toronto. Um, and just the creativity, having to please a new audience every yeah. day. But it wasn't so difficult because I'm so inspired by Cirque and Cirque du Soleil and the amazing, inspiring story and how they grew as a company and what they represent and what they stand for. Wow. So I was just thrilled to be a part of that every day. Mm -hmm. I would walk in there and I'd be like, this is where I'm going to work. This is how I'm, this is my job right now. Yeah. Is this for real? This is a dream. It Who gets to like do that? So, so did you have to balance a whole bunch of other things? Because it sounds like this took a lot of your energy totally. and a lot of your time. So totally. as youth, we struggle with that. Like, we want to pursue our own careers. We want to establish ourselves totally. while we're young. Totally. But then we have all this other stuff going on. Like, we need to take care of our family, our friends, all this. 
So how would you speak to that you've issue? You've got to manage, you've got to manage what is really important to you. And if it's all equally important to you, then you've got to take care of your business and prioritize your time. Okay. But I would say as a student, when I was a student, which I was a student for a long time, mm -hmm. um, it was hard to manage. I had three jobs. I was painting. I was live painting. I have a family that I'm very close with. You had three jobs while yeah. you were in school. Yeah, and you know, writing essays and, and like sleeping and finding time for your friends and family. You're absolutely right. It, it's a very crazy time until you, until you, you have to, you have to understand that you know, playtime is, is playtime, and there's a good amount of time that you set aside for that, okay. and the rest of the time you're building your life. And if you're really serious about it, you've just got to do it. That's awesome, Jess. I want to ask you a question. Sure. Um, you know how you said playtime is playtime, work time is sure. work time. Something that I'm noticing about our generation is they're kind of getting blurred because now you have this little cute thing called a cell phone. Totally. And this is something that I struggle totally, with. Totally, totally. And I can't separate those two worlds anymore because your social life is always permeating into your personal space. And as a painter, how do you deal with that? What do you do? You have to be diligent and you have to be really honest with yourself. Okay. And you also have to know that it's always going to be there and you've got to, you've got to put the work in if you're serious about it. Okay. Because it's so easy to be persuaded in other directions, mm -hmm. of course. And for me, playtime is work time too because I get to go out and perform yeah. and be social and meet new people and network and perform and I get to make money at that now. So I'm very, very lucky. Yes. Um, and my society of friends and family are very happy for me, and they know that. Um, and they know that I have time that, you know, I'm, I'm really busy most of the time. Mm -hmm. But I make time for friends and family because it's super important for me. That's, they're my inspiration. They're the reason, I think, why I'm doing what I'm doing, besides a bunch of other inspirations <laughs> that I have in my life. I'm very inspired by a lot of things, but that's super important. Um, it's, listen, it's very difficult to get sidetracked. You've got to be on the ball. And you've got to get your rest too, so that you can keep your stamina and your, you know, and I, I agree. And do I think, well. You want to do well, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you are an amazing role model. Thank you for young women and for youth in general. Thank you. And I think people are really excited and watching you right now. Wait until they see you live perform, which is coming up on the next episode of the Marina Show. We'll see you next time.